pleasant good morning to each and everyone saints of the in god's grace ministries on this beautiful sunday morning let's pray heavenly father we come before you in the wonderful son in the wonderful name of your son jesus christ O oh lord god we pray that you know this service edify us O oh lord god and whatever has been thought to us today lord god Help us to incorporate it in our day to day walk with you, Lord God. And I ask you, Father Lord, to equip your man servant, O oh Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the grace and the peace of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with and every one of you guys as I welcome you again to another day of fellowship with us right here at the In God's Grace Ministries. And if you are joining us right now on this platform, it is just because you haven't yet made it to number 307 Southern Main Road, Kunupia. Yes, where we are located right there on the main. You know, we are right there for each and every one of you all to find us. You can't miss us, you know, and you are all invited. You know, um, I want to take the opportunity to at this point in time to let you guys know that we have been an having an awesome outpouring of support and i pray that god continues to move each and every one of you all, right in whatever way so that we can continue to grow and that we can continue to build in jesus is almighty in his master's name so you know i want to give some shout outs to to a couple people out there you know but uh dexter friday de La rosa the emrock family all of you guys for the support that you all have been pushing in you know um sister annie brother dylan brother kendall brother kali brother jason all of you May God continue to bless each and every one of you and for your givings and for your outpourings also. Amen. Have your brother Kevin and Supriya, sister Supriya and brother Elias. You know, may God bless each and every one of you guys also for making so many things happen. All right, Pastor Sean, Pastor Anna for the support. You know, hallelujah. And I give God thanks and praise for you guys and your lives and for your, for your, for your, for your friendship also, you know. So I pray that God continues to bless and increase your ministries in the awesome name of Jesus. Brother, Pastor, um, Pastor Curtin out there, um, Brother, Brother Treflin, um, Brother Dave Brown. You know, all of you guys, thank you. Sister Rosanna and Brother Mark for making so many things possible this week. The chairs. Um, the sign, <laughs> the the monitor. I give God thanks and praise to you guys and for all that you're doing. You know, so I, you know, uh, I pray that God continues to strengthen you. I pray that you all continue to be faithful. I pray that God continues to bless you also. You can, you all can, you all can um, give your offerings on the altar also. You know, I pray that God continues to increase and multiply you guys in Jesus' is Almighty and in His matchless name. Hallelujah. All right, uh, all of the Didi's, Sister Joanne, for checking up on me there. The other this is a Lizian, Sister Kerian, Sister Camilla, Sister Sister Kia, Sister Anne Marie. Bless each and every one of you guys up there, Church on the Rock. Amen. Hallelujah for all all of your participation and for being there, for being thus loyal to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So. In that regard, I want to remind you all to have your emblems ready. Remember, we will be partaking of the communion shortly, all right, after the message, all right, so have your emblems ready, all right. Um, ensure also that you have your Bibles ready, because remember, this is church. You should not be here without your Bible. This is the inherent word of God, hallelujah, the unchanging, ever-powerful word of God, where God has poured himself onto, out onto these pages for us. All right, so we, we just to just we just need to just commune with him right here in these pages, and he's going to show us so much of himself. I mean, how you, uh, sister Nikisha, and all of you guys for making certain things possible, also, you know, and uh, thank God for each and every one of you, and may God order and guide your steps and causes all of, all things to be properly navigated in your life and in your circumstances. In Jesus is Almighty, and in His matchless name. Stay tuned, we have a powerful and awesome word coming up. God bless you all. Good morning, I'm Abel Ferris, and I'm going to be reading from Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law meditates all day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its 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 fruit in its season 
those whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the sharp of the witch and the sharp but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. No sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord knows the way, whereas the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. inviting you to welcome our youth meetings at 7 p.m. sharp on a Friday afternoon. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hi everyone, it's me, Sinead Cyrus, and I'm here to give you all this week's announcement. Just want to give you a couple of dates as well. Just to remind you all, we are located at number 307 Southern Maidwood, Kunupia. Our service begins at 9.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning and finishes at 11.30 a.m. We also have on a Wednesday, starting this Wednesday, our prayer and Bible study which will begin at 6.30 p.m. and finishes at 8.30 p.m. Our youth service is going to be held as well starting from 7 p.m. on a Friday right and then we're going to be finishing at 8 30 p.m on that and then on a sunday we also have the older youths meeting for 5 30 p.m in the afternoon but our online service our online sunday service continues as well yeah so that online service will continue and it will be starting at 9 30 a.m and finishing at 10 30 a.m as well this is the cater for all of you who are unable to actually come out to the physical building for whatever reason, we don't want you all to miss the word. So you all could log on if you all are unable, but we would also love to have you in our physical building as well. On a Tuesday night, we have our Knowledge of the Word session continuing, right? Where we would be meeting, discussing the Word of God starting from 8.30 p.m. and finishing at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night. Yes, and ladies, we are having our Women Bible Study the 30th of this month. We are looking at some of the women in the Bible starting from this month. We are also trying to compare these women to our lives, seeing, looking at areas where we need to improve, trying to live practical lives as Christian ladies with supporting each other. And we are having a wonderful time thus far. We are learning from each other's experiences and we just, we are having an awesome time. Feel free to join us. Feel free to be a part of this. This is a very comfortable setting where we could literally go through the word of God together. So ladies, we are looking forward to have you guys. We are enjoying this and we are loving it. We are looking forward for you all to become a part of our ministry.
story one more time, Jen. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why
because of that blood, <laughs> because of that blood, because of that blood, we can say, my hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome back. You know, um, today we will be looking at, be taking a reading from the book of Luke chapter 16 from verses 1 to 14, which actually was a text that we looked at last week. And then we will be proceeding to Ezekiel chapter 37. All right. Ah, uh, yeah, today is a dry bones day. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, we will be proceeding in that direction today and we have an awesome word for you as usual, you know. So stay tuned and, and be ready to receive something good. Hallelujah. Something awesome, something powerful, a life-changing word that is about to come across the airwaves you're going to right now. So just say, I receive. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and earlier on this year, I was remembering that a brother and I have brothers, brothers and brethren, you know. So a brother was telling me, he said, you know, um, you have some some funerals to do this year or something. So I just put it in the back of my mind. I didn't make any comments about it, you know, put it in the back of my mind. But every now and again, you know, I contemplate on what he said. And then uh, another brother was telling me, you know, that, you know, because of your position, you senior all of us, right? And, you know, I'm not talking about about um, they are uh, as myself, but age-wise also. They, 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 one reminded me, he said, your position seniors us as an older brother of mine, so you know um, I didn't look at it like that in, in that regard I know that the position of the vocation is one of um, major serious um, aptitude you know and um, I apply myself to it as best as possible you know and, and I stand in firmly in integrity and I know that God is going to protect me and continue to increase me because of my integrity and you know I try my best to to encourage others to walk and stand in integrity also you know so um and then um something came up and i recognize that you know the vocation even myself um you know god showed me something and, and he was saying you know the vocation is not just one that you know we bury people i don't just do a funeral you understand what i'm saying i literally shepherd you to the grave literally i shepherd you to the grave i i i am not just the one to hold your hand to counsel you to pray with you to be there with you through life's matters and, and some of the simple things and some of the hard things and some of the hard times and to encourage you through each and every difficult period i am that person who shepherds you to the grave you understand what that means you understand the seriousness of the vocation? I am that person who is going to prepare you, the believer in Christ, the believer, to meet Jesus Christ, your Lord. So the vocation that I have is not to be looked at lightly. It is not to be challenged. It is not to be, it is not to be condemned. It is not to be treated with disrespect. It's a very serious position and it has to be taken very seriously. And you know, when we look at Ezekiel and other, others of who had gotten appointments, you know, God, God literally would tell you, said, like in the case of Ezekiel, he said, Son of man, appoint thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. So therefore, warn the people. He says, and If you do not warn the people, then the blood will be upon your head. As well as if I warn the people, then the blood or the blame, the accusation is removed from me and placed upon them. So my vocation is not one to be placed lightly. And I will not compromise my vocation, office, or ministry for any reason at all. Because I really, really have that reverence and fear for God. So, having said that, I want you all to know and understand that every and everything that comes across this purpose is from and by the Spirit of God, from the living Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Know that I take this position and this vocation very seriously because I understand in the minutest way because I may not have fully gotten everything as yet because I know that if I were to say that I have everything down, that would be incorrect because God is unlimited. And there's so much more. So I can't, I can't say that I have cornered it. 
I know that there's so much more, but this is the little that, the, the minute among that I or God has caused me to understand. What I do and what pastors do is a very, very, very serious thing. We shepherd you to meet Jesus Christ. You hear me? So be careful. Thread lightly. Thread correctly. Walk in your integrity. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, so um, looking at Luke 16 again here, as I said, begins with Jesus speaking, and he says, from this is what, and he said unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and that same man was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear of this, of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do for my Lord? Take it away from me, the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto his first, How much owes thou unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then said he to another, and how much is thou? And he said, and hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take thy bill and write four score. And the Lord commended the understood, because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I said unto you, make yourselves friends of the mammon. You go ahead and make friends with mammon. The mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful, in that which is least is faithful also in much and he that is unjust in least also is unjust in much if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to you out your trust the true riches who will do it and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own no servant can save two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him. Bow with me if you pray for me. Father God, we give you thanks and praise even as we come before you humbly right now in the throne room, O oh Lord God. With all things we moved, asking you for forgiveness of all of our sins. Asking you, O oh Lord God, to Cause us to have understanding, wisdom, knowledge, application. Cause this will to be appropriate as it comes forth, O oh Lord God. You be the architect in our lives right now, O oh God. Cause, form, everything, O oh Lord God. Every thought, every deed, every action that proceeds here. Father God, we ask you for that anointing of healing, of wellness, O oh Lord God, also. In all of our atmospheres. One of peace. One of provision, protection, O oh Lord God. As we stand, O oh Lord God, behind your banner. As we stand, O oh Lord God, behind you, O oh Lord God. Knowing that you will protect us, guard us, guide us, and keep us from all harm. From all things, O oh Lord God. We ask you to strengthen us, to cause us to have integrity. To be truthful in all of our ways. To cease from lying. To cease from deceit. To uphold you, O oh Lord God. And not disregard. To obey your every instruction, we ask you that right now in Jesus' almighty name. And we thank you, Lord God, for hearing prayer. Even as you look over our seed and cause them to be fruitful. In Jesus' name, amen, and amen, and amen. Now that message there last week was big, you know. That message was prophetic too, you know. That message was an awesome way last week, you know. You see the accusation, right? The stewardship, the, the Lord and the steward, and he accused the steward. And the steward ran, instead of trying to make amends to the Lord, he ran to the world to try to fix things for himself. When, you know, the world can't do anything for you, not as a believer in Christ. You know, I'm saying, what's the wrong move, you know? If we have differences, it's better you go to the one who you have that issue with and straighten it out. Otherwise, you yourself can't go to the world. I believe what I'm telling you. Alright, so it's not good to hold anything against people. Alright, it's not good to hold anything against others, especially believers in Christ. If you think that you have been offended, sort it out with your brother. Otherwise, you can't partake in it. You ain't, your prayers ain't going to be heard. I, I'm telling you that right now. You are creating hindrances and blocks to your own prayer life, your spirituality increase, everything. You're going to start to see things regressing. Don't think 
that you can go forward into prayer and have any relationship with God with any ill repute on your mind and your spirit. It doesn't work like that, believers. Clear this up. All right? So, as I said, it was an awesome word. And it showed us how covetous we are as believers in Christ. How we also have this, this same situation playing off with us here that that accusation was made against us also that we we are wasting because we, we the responsibilities that god has given us the instructions that he has given us we're not even faithful in the little things to keep it not even in your finances you understand we're not even faithful in that to keep that and that doesn't have anything to do with me that has to do between you and god you understand what i'm saying is you have to bring it to the altar for him so if if we can't be faithful in a little bit who think you can trust him in much you know what i'm saying so we have to be careful and we have to, we have to keep going through the messages, understanding the messages you know, and, and, and all of that and applying it. You know, just sit down there, mm -hmm, aha, yeah, amen. And you're applying nothing to your lives and you know, check your own stewardship. See if you faithful in the things that God is requiring of you. You check it out. Amen, hallelujah. It's you who are going to get accused. You who will be blamed. And God didn't say, I'm going to kick you out and he said, I'm going to remove you from the position because sometimes you are not fit to hold certain position. So I'm going to bring you down a bit, get your act right, and you're going to go back up. If you want to come from. Hey, yeah, amen. So, you know, um, we, 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 we have experienced so much yeah, and, and, and so many things in our lives. We, we, we experienced death. We experienced so many, so many instances where, you know, we had... We had issues that that caused us to, to react badly to have bad emotions to, to have flare-ups where we have situations where some of the things in our lives never materialize although we had it in our minds you know and we saw it played out you know and it happens with relationships it happens with your home renovations you name it you know what i'm saying it have so many things your ambitions you know we had it we had certain things plotted out in our minds. We saw, we literally saw certain things. And then we saw certain things die also. That, you know, you couldn't finish certain projects. Your, your, your relationship on the rocks. You never finished school and the course you ever wanted to do or the business you wanted to open. You never got to it. You know what I mean? But we did see it. And a lot of things died with us, you know, and in, 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 as time passed by. And some of them we, we let go, we allow it to stay in the past. You stay back there. You know, you can't come with me. You feel where I'm coming from. So so we have all experienced these kinds of things, you know. And um I just wanted to tell you that it is not over. <laughs> you hear what I tell you? It is not over. Say in your circumstances and your situations right now, it is not over. It is not over, you know, not in Christ Jesus. You hear what I'm telling you? Not in Jesus. Just sit out in your own circumstances and in your atmosphere right now. It's not over. You hear what I'm telling you? All right, so let's look at Ezekiel chapter 37. Remember, I told you I'll be going there, so I hope that you all already found it. All right? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. And here what it begins with it. Here what it begins with it. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there was very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So Ezekiel is giving us an experience. Ezekiel say, the spirit of the Lord took him. So Ezekiel was having this, 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 this spiritual experience. And the spirit of the Lord took him and took him to a valley. And the valley was full of bones. You know, and he was passed round about. He, there was no area of the valley he wasn't taken and shown. I won't tell you something. You see, we operate in two realms, right? The physical and the spiritual. And only with God, only through Jesus Christ, you can really see what's taking place in the spiritual realm, you know, believers. You know what I'm telling you? Some of you all ain't gained that. Because you're not in Christ and you're not staying in Christ. You're breaking your service. You keep falling out and coming back in. You hear what I'm saying? Right? But when you're in Christ, God is going to give you that same experience like Ezekiel and take you in the spiritual to show you things that you have never seen wrong about from left to right. Ezekiel said wrong about and come past every area of the, area of the place in which you can see everything God wants to show you. Somebody out there right now, God wants to show you all the things and, and all you got to do is be faithful and stand in Jesus Christ. Without that, you ain't seeing anything anymore. Without Jesus, you ain't going to see anything. Hear what I'm telling you right now. So, 
he, he asked Ezekiel, he said, Son of man, can these bones live? Look at here, Ezekiel replying now. Thou knowest, <laughs> he's like, but you know that God, you know that, <laughs> you know that. You know where I'm coming from, it's like you asking somebody something and say, but you know that. You know what I'm saying? So, so God actually says, Son of man, can these bones live? And it just shows the ultimate confidence that we supposed to have in God, in Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. You hear know what I'm saying? Say ultimate confidence right now. Ultimate confidence. We have to have ultimate, that kind of ultimate confidence in God, in Jesus Christ, in the Lord. Ultimate confidence. Say ultimate confidence. Ultimate confidence. You hear what I'm telling you? So, he says, again, verses 4, he said unto me, prophesy. So, God is telling the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is telling Ezekiel now what he wants him to do. He's giving him the instruction of what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. All right, so he tells him, he said, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. O ye dry bones. Now, these dry bones are at a point and a period way past death you see you see that you die now still have all everything on the the, 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 the bones the you can still make it out you can still make out somebody but you see when it past death and it goes a certain period because to get the dry bones a whole lot of stuff got to be removed you know the skin the face the flesh the sinews everything got to be removed to get to the bones and then now the bones now still kind of the bones had a dry fit, a dry time has to pass, so then it is way past death. And Ezekiel says, Ezekiel says that God tells him to prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. All of you again want to say, hear the word of the Lord. You all understand that? Everything, beloved believer, everything has to respond to the word of the Lord everything has to respond to the word of the lord even the dead you you get it ultimate confidence even the things that are dead has to respond to the word of god ultimate confidence here what i'm telling you today have ultimate confidence so he continues in verses 5 he says thus said the lord god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live all right thus said the lord god unto these bones Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will cause breath to enter into you. That means anything that doesn't have breath cannot live. It definitely cannot live. Have you ever found yourself breathless? Let me just, I'm just asking you, have you ever found yourself breathless? When, when when situations take your breath away have you ever found yourself breathless what about the breath the breathless moments in your life I, I, i'm telling you i had some breathless moments in my life i'm sure that you had some breathless moments in your lives when when certain things died in your lives you feel where i'm coming from huh you feel where i'm coming from so we literally come and identify what causes something to die as soon as it has no breath it dies it cannot live so verse 6 comes and says this and i will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that i am the lord so he shows the process right he's, he's, he's speaking out the process i want you to hear what i'm saying so he spoke out the process speak out the process ultimate confidence speaking out the process all right remember what i said everything has to respond Everything has to respond to, to the word of the Lord. Even what is dead, there's a process. Amen. All right. So verse 7 says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And noise. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And these bones came together, bone to his bone. Ezekiel says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. You see, God ain't asking you today, believers in Christ, believers in Christ. God is not asking you, all right? He ain't asking you. God is telling you, you have to speak to the situations in your life right now that lack breath. 
he's not asking you you know god didn't tell me to show you this right now he's not asking you to go and ask the situations you know you hear what what ezekiel says ezekiel says so i prophesize as i was commanded god is telling you to speak to the situations that don't have breath that lack breath right now in your lives to bring them back to life again because every dead thing has to respond to the word of god remember ezekiel already knew when God could do it, when God asked him, God asked him, He said, Son of man, can these bones? He said, You know it, God. <laughs> you know it. You hear what I'm telling you? Ultimate confidence. Everything has to respond to it. Everything has to respond. Every every dead thing has to respond to the word of God. Every dead thing. You hear what I'm telling you? So 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 he says, bone to bone. Bone to bone. Just look, just look at it. He says, bone to bone. Came together. Bone to bone came together. Bone to his bone. Bone to his bone. Bone to his bone. You see, we got a lot of things scattered. We have a lot of things scattered, you know. We have a lot of things scattered. Things that we have to put together in our lives. A lot of things in our lives are scattered. They're scattered. Situations. Marriages. Relationships. Your finances. It in our mess. It's scattered. It, it all over the place just like this valley of dry bones this valley of dry bones everything is just scattered all over the place you know broken up finances ambitions relationships you name it plans renovations their homes you get what i'm telling you unresolved issues and they are about to get put back together you hear what i'm telling you here this morning everything every dry bone that lacked the breath we're going to speak to it right now and command in the name of Jesus Christ that you live. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? He said, I prophesy. I prophesy as I was commanded. So I'm telling you to speak to the situations in your lives that have died, that are lacking breath right now. Speak to the finances that lack in breath. Speak to the renovations that have been on hold. Speak to the ambition speak to your education speak to it speak to it speak to it right now amen hallelujah as i am commanded prophesy oh son of man speak unto it speak unto it <laughs> so from verses it from verses it hear what he said and when i beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above and there was no breath in them you hear that so the process starts to take place or you like stay with me you know because we're putting some things back together today in your lives you know so the process starts to take place so ezekiel says that he sees the entire process take place you know the whole rebuilding he says but still it ain't got no life in it there's no breath in it remember i told you in the absence of breath there is death there's no life so everything and, and and we can see things put back together you know we and some of you all have already seen some things being put back together today is just a breakthrough day for some of you know as well as some of you all this will be the day that the process begins but some of you have already seen so many things put back together but i can't get the breath yet i can't get the breath i can't get the breath yet you, you, you get what i'm saying so when we make plans and we see sometimes a perfect picture we see the perfect picture you know things coming together we see it coming together you, you start you start being faithful god and you see things coming together you see some things coming together but they reach at that point they reach at that point and you see it you know but it ain't it ain't doing what it had to do it ain't doing what it had to do it ain't doing what it had to do you know and sometimes we even see some of these things fall apart because we come and lose integrity you feel where i'm coming from so we have to get we gotta get everything back together again and everything is gonna be back together again. Marriages gonna be back together again. Hear what I'm telling you? Marriages with no breath. What was put together? Because some of you all in some relationships that you see the marriage come back together, you know, but something missing. The breath is missing from that marriage. The marriage is about to get that breath again. You hear? The the the, the, the ambitions about to get that breath again some of you all in your ministries you saw you have been seeing over a period of time that it come together it is coming together 
but there's no breath so we see things form up you know we see it form up you know but there's no breath so the breath is about to come into it here what verses 9 says then he said then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus said the lord god thus said the lord god come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon the slain that they may live that they may live we gonna be speaking to our situations today you hear what i'm telling you from every direction we are going to speak life into the things that have been laying dormant and dead in our lives. Without that breath, we're going to speak to it today saying, Thus said the Lord God, come from every direction winds because we're going to make some things re-manifest and re come back alive today in the name of Jesus Christ. Some things that you thought were there without breath about to, 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 to come alive. Speak to the wind. You understand what he's saying? He tell him, put it in the atmosphere. Put it in the atmosphere. What you want to come alive right now. Whether it's your marriage that has been affected by whatever. You want it to come alive. He said, speak to it. Prophesy to it. Speak to the wind. Tell it. It is going to take place from every direction. Every direction. We're coming at it from every direction right now. To bring every dead thing back to life. So that it shall live. So, so here is Ezekiel in verses 10. Ezekiel and Vision says, So I prophesize. I prophesize as he commanded me. Here again, he said, you know, As he commanded me, saying, God telling me to do it, how I do it. You know, God saying that I had to tell my situations. God didn't tell me I got to ask it. And he said, You command it. I say, Command whatever situation it is right now to have life in your life, to breathe. Because it's going to be coming from every direction, beloved believers. God commands every corner, every wind. He said, come from the four corners. So from every direction today, we're breathing life into every situation. That has laid dormant. That has been put together and just sitting right there and it's not moving the renovations in the home it ain't moving your education on hold it ain't moving your marriage on hold it ain't moving we breathe in life into it today from every corner in the awesome man as said speak it he said prophesy to the wind you know so speak it into your atmosphere in your homes right now speak it speak the completion in your homes right now speak it into the wind whatever it is speak it right now Amen. So verses 10, verses 10 here he says, So I prophesy as he commanded me. Prophesy as speak it as God commands you. And he says, And the breath came into them and they lived. Hey, I say ultimate confidence. Just say that in your womb right now. Ultimate. And stood up. They stood up on their feet. They stood up on their feet. An exceeding great army. Son of man, can these bones live? You know it. Thou knowest God. Son of man, can these bones live? You know it, God. Son of man, can your marriage live? You know it, God. Son of man, can your finances live? You know it, God. Son of man, can your ambitions live? You know it, God. Son of man, can your education come back to where it needs to be? You know it, God. Come on. Hallelujah. Give him eyes praise him. Because we're going to make some things live. You know it, God. You know it. Thou knowest, God. Hey! Hallelujah. 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 Alright? So from verses 11 now, he comes and he says this. He says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. The whole house of Israel. And behold, they say, our bones are dry. And our hope is lost. We are cut off for our past. Not from, you know. Let me deal with that first thing. We are cut off for our past. For the past that we played. Or actually, the past that we ain't played. As a church. As a believer. For taking things for granted. When God say, attend church. When he say, be diligent in your ministry. 
when you say covet earnestly your best gifts and show I unto you a better way you say make sure that you're doing what you have to do as soon as you understand who you are in Christ Jesus make sure so we get cut off for our parts for the parts we played that's how we just get licked down so don't take it for granted when son of man warn you know Heed the warning and try and make things right between you and God. So, he says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. You, the church, the believers, who saying that things ain't working. That's what going on here. He's saying that things ain't working. They ain't working out for you. I say, who saying some things just ain't working out for you? Today, speak it to the wind. Speak it to the wind. So here verses 12 and 13 here. Because it finishes that verses 14. It says, And ye shall know that I am the Lord. O my people. When I have brought, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. God. A. God wants to remove you from the situations and the perils that you are in right now. God wants to take you up and out of the graves. Up and out of the graves. Up and out of the bad situations, the bad places, the bad areas where your marriage is, where your finances were. Where things stop moving in your lives. Where your ambitions died, where everything became breathless. God says that I want to bring you up and out of the graves, beloved believers. You know it, God. You know it. You know it. He wants to answer some of your prayers. Because some of you have been praying for a while about some things. He wants to answer your prayers. So he's telling you that they speak to the wind, the beloved believers. Speak to the wind. Speak to the wind, prophesy, speak it into the wind. They're coming from all corners. Everything God is going to breathe his, his breath back into it in Jesus' name. And then he says, And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I have performed it. Beloved believers, I ain't think I hear what our last will say. It says, I have spoken it. And I have performed it. Listen to me, my heart crying for some of you guys here right now. Because of the breakthrough that's going to take place in your atmospheres. God said, I have spoken it. I have performed it. God ain't talking to you. In the present tense with the situation that you have. With the breakthrough that you're about to take place. With the turnaround that's about to take place in your life and in your atmosphere. God ain't talking to you in the present tense. God speaking to you in the past tense. He said, I have already did it. I've already done it. I've already caused everything that has not breath in your life. To breathe and to live. I have already brought it up out of the grave. He said, I, the Lord, did it. I ain't going to do it. I, the Lord, already did it. I spoke it. I performed it. Beloved believer in God, just raise a praise in your home you know, and burst through all things that have been holding you back because God is about to change every situation and circumstance in your life in the awesome and in the almighty name of his son Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I, the Lord, have did it. Beloved believers, it is already done. It is already done. It is already done. You hear what I'm telling you? Ultimate confidence in what God is about to do in your life. Remember what I told you. Everything, everything has to respond, has to respond to the word of God, to the word of the Lord. Everything, even what seemed 
to be dead in your lives. I'll see you guys in a minute for the communion. Bow with me in prayer for a second. Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise even right now, Lord God, for that awesome word and revelation of the scriptures, God. Father God, again, we ask you to be the architect of all things in our lives, in our relationships, in our hearts, our, the persons that we interact with, with the things that we are about to see take place in our lives, with the rebuilding of our homes, our finances, marriages, relationships between fathers, sons, daughters, mothers, brothers, sisters. We ask, O oh Lord God, for that complete restoration. And we speak everything into the air right now, into the atmosphere, O oh Lord God, that it shall be done in the almighty name of Jesus Christ, even within our health, O oh Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what I wanted to tell you guys still too? What we witnessed today was a mass resurrection beloved believers there's no limit to god and what he can do i'm telling you i'm speaking to all of you out there a mass resurrection of all things that were dead in your lives are about to come back to life in Jesus' name amen hallelujah hallelujah awesome awesome word you know I, I, I thank god for the revelation i thank god for all of you guys who are receiving also in Jesus' name, amen. And I want you all to remember something. I want you all to remember something. Um, salvation comes only through Jesus Christ. Only by believing. Hear what I'm saying? Not by what you do. It's already done. It's by what Jesus Christ did. Alright? That's what we call the gospel. Um, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what qualifies you to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you've got to believe in. You've got to believe in what Jesus Christ did. You hear what I'm telling you guys? A lot of people going and end up in hell because of the wrong understanding. Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 13, as he who hears and understands. If you don't understand it, you can be just like those who are lost right now thinking that your works have something to do with your salvation. Who believe that you can lose your salvation. And if you think you can lose your salvation, then you really is, it isn't in your possession. You understand what I'm telling you? It really isn't in your possession. Anytime you think that you can lose it, you cannot lose your salvation. Why do you want to go to hell? Why would you think that? Why would you think that what Jesus Christ did is not sufficient for you to be saved? Why would you think that something you do would cause you to lose what Jesus Christ has died for? Because if it is like that, then you contradict the entire scriptures that you are saying that works has something to do with your salvation when it is only faith. You understand what I'm telling you guys? And a lot of people are lining it to works and their righteousness also. That ain't good with neither. Right? Some people think it's about not smoking. Some people think that they, when they get baptized. Some people believe it's when they're not fornicating. Some people believe it's when they're not drinking rum. But let me tell you something here this morning. Before we go anything anywhere further, hell won't be full with people who wasn't fornicating, who wasn't smoking, who wasn't drinking, who been baptized. You hear what I'm telling you? Because they have the wrong understanding. Salvation comes by you believing in what Jesus Christ did only by faith alone through Christ alone. Hallelujah. Not by any works. You'll get it right. No prayer you could say could save you neither. So when you see people calling, they calling you up and they're saying, stand and give Jesus your heart and, and make Lord the love of your life and, and these things, those things don't save you. I'm telling you, hell going to be full. They have whole churches that are going to hell. I'm telling you that. You hear what I'm telling you? Because Jesus was mathematical with it, you know. He said, only those who were planted on good soil. And he gave he gave an example of four different types of germination, which means that he split the whole, the entire of the world's existence in quarters. And three quarters of it are going to fail in that regard concerning salvation, only one quarter. The quarter that understands and has that ultimate confidence in him. Thou knowest, God, you know. You hear what I'm telling you? How whole churches going to hell outside there? Whole churches. And he, he, Jesus said it. He said, Some of you are going to come to me saying, Lord, Lord, I've done marvelous works in your name. I've prophesied in your name. And what are you going to tell them? You get away from me, you work of iniquity. I don't know you. I don't know you. You hear what I'm telling you guys? Only faith alone through Christ alone. I'm a lot of people going to hell. I'm telling you that. So, get your emblems ready at the moment right now, you know, the blood and the body and the blood. Raise it. 
Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise even right now, Lord God. We give you thanks and praise for all that you're doing in our lives, for the turnaround in our lives, for the resurrection of so many dry bones in our lives even right now today, for that mass resurrection, Lord God. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you, Lord God, for including us in this process. We thank you, Lord God, for being there for us, for turning around so many things. We thank you, Lord God, for saving us, for your grace, for your mercy, for your favor upon our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for healing right now. And we thank you, Lord God, for reminding us that you are coming again. You may break and partake. Hallelujah. And in like manner, he held the cup. And the cup represents his blood. Said this is the New Testament cup in my blood. The cup represents the New Testament in his blood, the new covenant in his blood. And in his blood, there is healing, there is breakthrough, redemption, restoration. Every good work that God has purpose for us. And we do this in remembrance that Jesus is coming again. Subduing curses, breaking chains, opening doors. Thank you, Lord, right now. Amen. Hallelujah. We party. Remember, our address is on the screen. Number 307, Southern Main Road, Columbia. We invite you all. We have room for you all. And support the ministry. Amen. You see, local and foreign, they, they are ways. You know, we have the account and we have um, Zoom to get contributions to us. All right. We have a vibrant young team and um, the postings for the physical attendance for the week for the Bible study and the youth ministry and all that will be done this week and say we have a sign going up soon. May God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you with the love of the Lord. This is Pastor Solomon Delarosa in God's grace.